Whether you're a portrait photographer or a wildlife photographer or a wild portrait photographer, you know that making a connection with the eyes is of utmost importance. If you want the viewer to truly engage with the subject that you have, the eyes are what's going to do it. Obviously, there are other things there too, but we always want focus to be right in the eyes. But beyond in-camera focus, there's focus that you should apply to those eyes in Photoshop. Now, this has to be done in Photoshop. You can't do this in Adobe Camera or Lightroom. I'm going to show you how to use gradients to make bland eyes more bold, vibrant, and inviting for your viewer. Let's dive in. I do have to give you a little caveat here. In all of my experimentation with this, it's important to follow me to the letter. However, I don't expect you to remember all of this, so I've already made you a PDF that's downloadable in the description below and will also be at the end of the video. It also includes 20 of my eye gradients that I've created for you completely free of charge so that you can make your bland eyes more bold today. So let's let's do this. All right, how do we how do we start? First thing I'm going to do here is grab the object selection tool in Photoshop. That's this guy right here. And I'm going to change this to the lasso selection. It might be by rectangle by default. I just kind of prefer the lasso so I can draw around things. Now, what this is going to do, I don't even have to make a good selection. I can make a sloppy selection around the iris of this eye. In humans, I'm really only going to focus on the iris. I don't want this to go all throughout the entire eye because we're going to be adding color and light to the eye. And I don't necessarily want that color in the rest of the eye, just the iris. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a gradient on here. Okay, now by default, that gradient is going to be set to whatever is in your foreground or background colors and whatever gradient you use last. So I used a transparent gradient last and my foreground color is this cyan blue. So that's the color that's here. I don't necessarily want it to be that because we don't want that in the eye. It looks like her eye is filling up with water like she's about to cry. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a radial gradient. And I want the center of that, that gradient to be right in the middle of the pupil. And because we're already in a mask, as I increase the scale, it's going to confine that to that space. Now, the scale that you choose here is going to be based on two things, the gradient that we choose and also the uh, resolution of the photo. So now what I need to do is change this gradient. So I'm going to click over into the gradient editor here. I prefer to use the gradient editor and the gradient fill dialog over the gradient tool. You are more than welcome to use what you're most comfortable with. I'll be showing you with these tools. I'm going to choose one of my eye gradients and I'm going to try to find a, a color that was similar to her eye to begin with, which is probably going to be somewhere along this gray color. It doesn't have to be perfect because what really is going to happen here is the blend mode that we're going to use is going to blend this color that we have selected with the color that is in her eye. So right now it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to press OK and I'm going to increase the scale here so that it fills the entire eye. And I'll press OK. I'm going to press Control and Spacebar and zoom out a little bit because we are uncomfortably close to her face. Now with that, you'll see that there is a hard edge around the mask. So if I click on the mask itself, I'm going to bring the feather up in the properties so that we get a nice smooth transition around that and that transitions right in. It's easier to see this when we don't put the blend mode on first, but we'll get this nice natural ring around the eye, which does tend to get darker as we get close to the edge there anyway, which will retain that natural color. I'm either going to use the vivid light blend mode or the hard mix blend mode. Now, which one I use is dependent upon the image. Hard mix is going to give me an influx of, of contrast, both light and dark, along with the color that I choose. Vivid Light is going to do the same thing, but it kind of has a governor on it. It looks the same, but it has a more natural approach. Which one you use is dependent upon the image, and you're going to have to experiment. I'm going to choose Vivid Light for this one. Now, I've got the gradient pretty much set up where I want it to be. Fill is the algorithm adjustment for the math that's happening between this layer and all the layers below it. So if I want this vivid light to look better, I'm not going to use opacity because what that's going to do is it's just going to lessen the intensity of the current effect. Instead, I'm going to go down to the fill and drop the fill that will change the algorithm or the math is working between this layer and the layer below. I tend to keep this somewhere between 30 and 50. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, let's just keep it a little bit higher so that you can see it a little bit better. Now let's look at the before and the after on this eye. Not too bad, but look right here on the outside of our pupil. You see that little brown ring? It doesn't have that in here. Let's go ahead and make that though. So I'm going to double click on this gradient. I'm going to click on the gradient here. What we need to do in order to get that brown ring there is add some more stops to this gradient. You see, this is a stop and this is a stop. So what I want to do is I want to add a brownish color to the outside of the pupil. So I'm just going to click somewhere kind of randomly on here. 
Now, when I click, it might add the same color that we had in our foreground color. So let me click on this, double click on this. And I'm gonna change this to a brownish, like a lighter brownish color. So I'm gonna go down into these oranges and then pop up here to something like this. And that's gonna, again, I'm, I'm trying to make these eyes more bold. I'm trying to make them more present, but also add color. So we'll move that to about right there and press OK. This transition is very heavy between where this brown starts and where it transitions out to the rest of the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little diamond here because I'm on this color. Once you click on that color, it'll show you where the transition is between this color and the next color in the stop. So I'll grab this diamond and I'll pull it over. And as I pull that over, you see I can make a very well-defined ring of light and color around that eye. Again, I'll click here and move this over so we get a little bit outside of that pupil and then come right here and that looks good. Now the color of this eye is now a deeper blue and not quite as natural as it was before. So I'm going to borrow and steal this color right here and put it on this side. So I'm going to double click this color and down here. This is EF or E5F2FF. That's the hex code for this. If I copy that code, press OK, and then double click on this color, I can paste that code in there and I can get that more natural looking color. Now I'll move this around so I get more of that, uh, that grayish color. This was too blue and too bright. So I'll get more of a grayish color here and press OK. Now this is a whole new eye gradient that I haven't even included in my gradients for you. And you're going to do this on your own. You'll come up with an eye gradient that's just so good. And you're like, how do I save this? Well, over here where it says new uh, name, we're going to change this to uh, gray with brown. Okay. And then when I press new, it'll add this to the bottom of my gradients editor. So I always have that available to me and I'll press OK. I'll press OK. Now I'll zoom out. Look at how gorgeous that eye looks. And look at how it mimics this eye almost perfectly based on the colors that we chose. Now I'm not trying to change her color to some purple or something crazy. I mean, if I was doing something with a special effect or a composite, I might. But for this image, I'm trying to keep it as natural as possible just to get the viewer more engaged with the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this gradient because now we need to do this to the other side. So I'll press Command or Control J. That will duplicate this gradient here. I'm going to grab the mask and just delete it. Just bring it down to the trash can and delete it. If it asks you if you want to apply that mask, say no, because what we need to do here is we need to make a circle around this other eye. So I'll circle right around this other eye right here. And then with the object selection tool, I'll go ahead and press a new mask. Now there was a checkbox in this gradient that says align with layer. That's important to keep that way. Because when we do it that way, it will make sure that the center of that gradient happens in the center of that only that one spot of that mask. Press OK. What I need to do first is, again, feather this mask. So I'm going to feather this mask to match the feather of this mask, which was about four and a half pixels. Again, that will change based on the size of the uh, of the resolution of the image that you have there. Now, just to make sure that this eye color is in the right spot, I'm going to double click it. Move this around to get it right where it's supposed to be so that, that brown is just on the outside of the pupil and press OK. Now we've got some beautiful looking eyes. However, it does still appear a little bit unnatural. What I need you to do when you're doing this is pay attention to how the light is on the face. There is more light on this side of the face and less light on this side of the face. So what we're going to need to do here is make sure that this eye is not quite as bright as the other one. We could either lower the opacity here or drop the fill a little bit so that, that eye is slightly darker than the other eye so that it appears natural. People like myself who do have deeper inset eyes will have a problem with light hitting the eyes appropriately, where our, our eyes might not light up as well as somebody's eyes who are a little bit further out from their head. And that's just the way people work, okay? But we can infuse these eyes with beautiful, gorgeous, bold light instead of being bland. So with this one, I did say I was going to increase this for the sake of the tutorial. Let's go ahead and decrease this now to make it a little bit more natural. And as always, I could also drop the opacity. Once I have the fill set, I can drop the opacity to decrease that intensity if it is too strong. Here's our before. Here's our after. Much more engaging eyes. Let's take a look at this tiger. Now, I typically photograph uh, birds, raptors this is my favorite, hawks, falcons, bald eagles, that sort of thing. And their eyes are different than human eyes in that their entire eye is a color. So here you're not necessarily highlighting the iris, you're highlighting the whole eye. I do this in all my wildlife images. This is a stock image of a tiger, but I would still do this even on my own wildlife images. So let's do this. I'm going to do the whole process again. But remember, in the description below, I've got a whole PDF for you and 20 gradients that you can download so you don't have to do this on your own. I'm going to zoom in here. 
I'm going to grab my object selection tool with it set to lasso and draw around that eye. Once I have that set, all I have to do is press the gradient button. Now I'm going to set this to a radial gradient because it's circular, put the center of it right in the middle of the pupil and then increase the scale. So it fills the entire eye. Now the gradient that I'm going to want to use is going to be something that's natural to this tiger's eye. I do have quite a few different gradients that could work, but this one is going to be particularly great because it has that greenish color on the outside of the pupil that transitions into that brighter orange or yellow color. It's like kind of an orange yellow. We'll press. Okay. Now again, what do I need to do with the mask? I need to increase the feather. Okay. If I press alt or option and click on that mask, we can see how this is going to feather and transition here. I'll feather that over just like that. And then we'll click back on the gradient and then we're going to change this to let's try hard mix on this one. Cause we used vivid light on the other one and I'll drop the fill because that's going to change the algorithm of how the math works between those, uh, between the gradient and the content below. Okay. So we'll do that about 40% for the sake of this tutorial, but look at how that eye is already so much more impactful than the other one. Let's do this for the other eye. What do we need to do? Duplicate this gradient. I'm going to press control J on a PC, command J on a Mac, grab the mask, delete the mask. Don't apply the mask. I'm going to make a selection for the other eye. Okay. And because that gradient was set to align with layer, because that's how we initially set it up. Once I press the mask, it should do a good job of putting it in there. If it doesn't double click on that gradient, make sure it says align with layer, and then make sure the center of that gradient is right over the pupil and then press. Okay. The last thing I need to do is refine the edge on this mask and bam, look at this tiger. So now I am more engaged with this tiger's eyes when they are more bold and more crisp and more lively and more colorful. I think honestly, in the composition of this, I'm actually looking more at the nose of this tiger than I am the eyes. But once I do that to the eyes, I can, I can't do anything but embrace those eyes. It's kind of like when I met my wife, when I first saw her, the first thing that attracted me to her was she has these beautiful light blue eyes that were just so bold. And the minute I saw her, I was like, wow, who is this woman? And I want people to have the same effect when they are making portraits for other people or wildlife for other people to be absorbed into those eyes. But we do want to do this as natural as possible and not completely shift or alter the color of those eyes. And as I stated before, I have a PDF and 20 gradients for you that you can download it in the description below or click right here in this video. And you should see it up there that will take you to the area where you can download these gradients and the PDF that I have to go with this. So you don't have to do this on your own. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your portrait or wildlife workflow today.